that you are still watching us uh, here uh, at uh, we are broadcasting live from Papi Hills of the FCT. And uh, before the break, we are looking at World Interfaith uh, Harmony Week with uh, Pastor Frank Olagwe, the senior pastor of Camp David Harvesting Church. And he did see that move by the United Nations in 2010 is laudable and will ensure that the world indeed uh, will live uh, peaceful. And also joining us is the chief imam of Al Habibia Mosque. Uh, Imam Fuad Adem. Uh, very good morning and welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm sorry for uh, just coming in. It's one of the things that has joined my culture. I'm sorry. Yeah, so uh, before you join us, the mm -hmm. Pastor Frank uh, did, uh, you know, uh, give kudos to United Nations for that uh, laudable establishment. And of course, he believes there are many, many uh, faith around the world. If you go to China, uh, what they practice is different from uh, what is practiced in Israel. What is practiced is in Israel different from what is practiced in Greece, in India. Uh, in India. Yeah. And then if you go to Saudi, it's different from what is practiced in Rome. And then in some countries like Nigeria, we practice almost everything by different people. So let's uh, have you land on that point before we uh, come back to Yes, um, again, like we said, we, we, I, like we said, I think it should be based on dialogue, mm. you know, not um, debates, not um, intention to bring the other uh, parties down. Mm. Uh -huh. We should live in a world that, is, uh, that should accommodate every one of us, mm. whether we belong to this religion or the other. Um, and we must also understand that we, we came from one source and um, the, the almighty God who created every one of us. So in that light, in trying to enforce um, your belief on someone's um, uh, into someone's ears, it shows that something has gone wrong. Again, like we have said, 2010, and if you look back um, before 2010, you discovered that even in, in, in Nigeria, we have heard so much about um, uh, religious uh, riots, killings, and so on and so forth. Why? Because of things that we hear, things that are said about a particular religion, things that are said about the other religion. So uh, people can maybe again misunderstand it and they implement it based on their personal understanding. And it goes a long way. The, even the insecurity we talk about here in Nigeria, uh, in the Northeast, in the uh, North uh, uh, West, Central, and so on and so forth, if you look at it, there are elements of religion. There are two things involved. That I just said religion, number two, politics. So I, 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 um, uh, in, in handling one, I think we should also look at the other one because I believe whatever that is happening now in Nigeria, whether uh, they call it um, banditry or they call it um, terrorism kidnapping. or kidnapping, you see elements of because whether you like it or not, the kidnapping you see today is as a result of how did they lay their hands hands on, on, on the arms they use? Politics, maybe during election. An election is coming. Before you know the distributions of arms, money, and so on and so forth. So it all ties together. Now, the UN is saying that there should be harmony. There should be peace. There should be tranquility. Then I think that we should critically look at it. Because if you kill your neighbor, will you have a neighbor? So we should also look at it in the light of God. How does God see it? Because, again, like I used to say, you don't fight for God. I mean, does God actually does not need your help. God does not need you to fight for him. Uh, he, he said, be still and know that I'm God. I, I can take care of myself. I can even take care of you. So you are not, I am not sending you to kill or to die for me. I mean, that is, that is my take on that. Okay, uh, Imam Fuad, let's get your, your opening shot on this. Uh, First and foremost, I still want to apologize for mm. not coming on time. Uh, like I always say, it's not in my character. Mm. But those who know, so I'm sorry once again. Uh, let me first and foremost start with uh, 
a Quranic verse. Allah says, if he had wish, he would have made everybody believe and submit. So that it means all human beings will have been Muslim or will have been Christian, will have been anyone. God said, it is because he did not wish that all of us practice the same thing. That's why you have this, you have that. I think that forms the basis. <coughs> that it means it's not even in the mind of God that all of us should do the same thing. For anybody to think that he wants to force other people to his own, it means he's actually working against God. So we should understand from there. And I always say, with humility, with gratitude to God, I am a product of interfaith. I am a program of religious tolerance. I come from a family where all of us are scholars. I always tell people, we, of our age, we are the fourth generation of imams and scholars in my family. So whether we go to school or not, the mere fact that you grow up from my family, you are already a scholar. It's, you don't even forget where you go or where you don't go. Now, when we are like between six and 13 years old, the, we were living under our grandfather. And that grandfather was the chief imam of my town in Oshun that time. Three things we witnessed in dream that affect our life today. The Anglican church in my town is not far from our house. Whenever they, have, they, they finish services every Sunday, they bring the takings from the church to my grandfather. We are one of those that used to collect each of the takings. The offerings. The offering. So our grandfather, I, can, I always describe him as the treasurer of the Anglican church. And at the same time, the chief imam of the town. Then behind our family house is the residential of the Catholic church clergy person. So whenever he, they bring a new clergyman, and we had Catholic, we used to call them father. Mm -hmm. yes, the call popular, father. They, that is yes, the name we call them father. father. Our father will stay outside as his, the father is passing, say, you come. I know you don't have a wife nor children, but I have children that can work for you. Is there any time you have time, come to my house. Come and pick the number of children that you want that will be serving you as your boy in your residence. Incidentally, I used to be one of those that fathers used to take. So it has really exposed me to most of these things. And I always say he was the, the educational officer of the, the, the traditionalists. The, there is what we call the Igungu people, the masquerade. My grandfather will go and carry their children. Say, you are just doing this thing. You have abandoned your children. My grandfather will go, will carry their children. Of and, traditional of worshippers. Traditional worshippers. He keep it in his house. And today, they are big scholars, those children. Then you see even traditional leaders, traditional, this Egungu people will be entering our grandfather's house. His colleagues will be fighting him. Say, hey, holy man, why should you accept this? You know, we tell them, if I don't allow them to see what I do, how would they appreciate what I do? These are the things that we grew up to see and to know. And that is why it will be very hard for any Muslim who claims to be Muslim sincerely and worshipping Almighty Allah. And you still, you go and kill, you destroy, you insult, you abuse other religion. In fact, Directly from the Quran, Almighty Allah tells us, do not insult the God of other people. Because when, they, when you insult them, if they insult you back, you are the one that is seen. If anybody insults Allah because of your action. So, whatever what the United Nations are now trying to do, I always say it, they just want to officialize what I am, I grew up to know. <laughs> it is to me, United Nations, yes, they have tried. They have done, I think they have done this for those who are in the darkness of not knowing what exactly to live together, to stay together, to understand yourself together. I remember when we were growing up, there is a place called Galilee 
in my town in Oshun. in Oshun. I'm from Ode Omu for those who want to know. There's a place every Easter, the Christian children will say they are going to Galilee, that that is where they will, Jesus will rise according to what we got to know before. I'm just saying it the way we know it, not the way I've read after I grow up. Up to today, we always go there that they say they will, Jesus will rise. As old as I am, anytime I go to my town today, if I pass through Galilee, I'll be looking at it. Probably I will be the first person to meet Jesus Christ <laughs> up to today. That is, those are the things that was, uh, that was internalized in our life. So when I see anybody, Christian, Muslim, arguing or insulting themselves, I Hindu, look at them. Uh, Hindu, no, let's talk about Nigeria, which we know. <laughs> let's talk about Nigeria. Yes, there are a lot of Juda uh, Judaism people in Nigeria. Perhaps you might know there are so many of them. I've been working with so many of them now. But at least an average Nigeria knows about Islam and Christianity. I'm sure of that. Okay, now let's get to uh, Pastor uh, Frank. How can we begin the process of dialoguing? You know, this dialogue, is it a difficult thing to do? Where do we start from? At the community level? At the state level? At the national level? What can we do? I have seen you uh, some years back uh, among the interfaith um, um, I, I think it, it, it was interfaith um, something practice now. I've seen you, you know, among them uh, uh, talking with imams and, uh, and, and Islamic scholars. Uh, was it a, a difficult thing for you to do? Not, not really. Um, like I said, um, when we talk about dialogue, it must be of good conscience. Good conscience, good intention. It starts from there. It also starts from what we see from the pupils, what we tell our people. Like you have said now, the dialogue begins from the community, but it starts within us, within us. Um, like we have agreed, our focus is Nigeria. And the two main religions in Nigeria, talk about uh, Muslim or Islam, and Christians, then even pagan as it were. But for the dialogue to begin, we must understand something that that dialogue should be cooperative, should be corporate, should be harmonious. Then number two, it should be constructive. It should also be positive. Now, whatever you say or whatever you do in that process, it is not about you. It is about your goal, your, what you want to achieve at the end of the day. Now, and what is that? Peace, harmony. That is the focus. So it is not about self, because even the Almighty God is against pride and arrogance. It must not be I. It must not be um, I am superior to you. Like our precious Imam has said here, if we have different, if we have different religion in the world, God permitted it, and for the purpose. And I used to say, until we understand what purpose is, we will always get things wrong. A lot of people don't even know the purpose of religion or the purpose they are in that religion. Like some people, they are not; they don't know the purpose of marriage, so they want to marry. Someone said, "I want to marry." Why do you want to marry? Because my friends are getting married. It doesn't make sense. Some people marry because of convenience. In the same way, some people belong to a particular religion because of so many reasons. But if you, if you, if you put your light on it, you discover that they don't understand the purpose they are in that religion. Why am I? Because that is what is practiced. I mean, I heard of a story in an organization. People were resigning. And someone else also sat down and wrote his resignation letter. And when he was asked, why are you resigning? He said, because I saw people resigning. And that is what is happening even in the religious world. Because somebody is doing what is wrong, for example, you also do it because this person belongs to you. 
I mean, if, if a Christian is doing something wrong, you know, I said, okay, because he's a Christian, let me also do it because I have to protect my brother. And that is why I talk about politics. And that is why we, you discover that now in religion, there are elements of politics in religion. Because of what they want to achieve, because of selfish interest. Like I said, the insecurity we talk about in Nigeria now is, it, 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 you, you can see, it's not just um, uh, based on religion. No, there are politics in it. And that is why, if you want to also dialogue, you should also look at it from that angle, the political angle. I mean, it must be holistic. It must be holistic. It must, you must look at it from different angles. But you must understand that if that dialogue, if that, um, it will, if, if, we mo if we must achieve that harmony, if we must achieve that peace, it must be from the light of good intention to not just for self, but for the peace and harmony of um, the family, the neighborhood, the society at large, and of course the nation. Because there is no progress without uh, peace. There is no development. Because there are, some, there are some parts in Nigeria now where you, can, you cannot beat your chest and say, I want to go and do uh, uh, a job there. I want to go and uh, build uh, a borehole there. I want to construct a road. Because of insecurity. And if there is no peace, that is why we should begin to look at it in that light. If there is no peace in my, in my community, there won't be, there won't be uh, development. If Sorry. there is no peace in my community, there won't be, there won't be uh, good. good education. There won't be food supply because a lot of people now are scared of going to the farm. And of course, this, this we, we, are, we, we are supposed to be in, in the age where production should be surplus. But because of the things happening around us, so whatever dialogue <coughs> we are going to have, or we are having, or they have had already because mm. um, it has ended, I believe, mm. should be of good intention. It should be constructive. It's it should be positive. Okay. It should be. Okay. Okay. It should be yes. The um, um, World Interfaith Harmony. Okay. Week. It should be. It should really be. It should be positive. It should be constructive, and it should be all encompassing. Everyone must be carried along. No segregation, so that we can also listen to ourselves. Dialogue is not just for you to talk. Dialogue is also for you to listen, and most importantly. Whatever the discussion may be, there should be also, there should also be a room for implementation, not just to judge or as as they call it, uh -huh, but to also see how it can be implemented. Okay, I Imam, l l what role uh, you think leaders, just leaders, can play in this? The dialogue, of course, he pointed it out. One will talk. After talking, then you listen to the other person to to talk so you say talking and listening thing otherwise waiting, uh, activity yeah. to waiting so uh, but we all know that the book is on the desk of leaders religious leaders what can they do well thank you so much i think the pastor has uh, raised an important aspect which is the dialogue but before dialogue something precedes mm -hmm. and that is education mm -hmm. you see when you just dialogue because i want to listen to a christian because i want to listen to a muslim you are just assuming that you are friends you are yet to be convinced that mm -hmm. you are friends or you are not enemy that is one then we i will i will, I will explain that later the other area which you need is forgiveness and uh, I want to appreciate a state today that have declared what they call a, a, the day of forgiveness. Mm. And today is the last day. Probably they are doing it because of the what happened in line with the, uh, with the, the, the United Nations. Something, uh, something. Yes. Today they are marking what they call uh, forgiveness day in Plateau State. Mm. I just read and heard about it. The governor, who sincere person, brought the Muslim and Christian together. And all, apart from, all from the Muslim. There's even the intra uh, quarrel between each religion. So he brought everybody together to now come up with what they refer to as forgiveness day. Mm -hmm. That is, I forgive you, forgive me. But before that, 
what also led to forgiveness is also education and information. And what do I mean by that? I personally have discovered that the only problem we have in this country is in education and wrong information about the two religions. Uh, I've met a Muslim who believe a Christian, any Christian he has met in this world is his enemy. I've met a Christian who believe every Muslim are killers and they are his enemy. One on one is not assumption. I'm telling you from practical experience now. This is the only thing I do in my life now. Now we now discover that our greatest challenge here is wrong information and ignorance or what I call lack of education about ourselves. We introduce a particular program called Abrahamic Mission. And what do we do in Abrahamic Mission? We bring a pastor, we bring an imam. Now, for example, let's look at who is Jesus Christ to all of us. When a Muslim says who Jesus Christ is to him, a Christian will be shocked to his marrow that so Muslim has this type of thing about Jesus Christ. You will be shocked that so Muslim has this. Unconsciously, the peace will begin to come up. So when we now want to dialogue, you know what we are dialoguing on now. If any Muslim is misbehaving or say something about Jesus, a Christian can tell you, like I met a pastor, Pastor Unamba. We are talking about salamit. That some Christians said they can't eat salamit. He said those people are ignorant. For any reasonable Christian should know that this salah belongs to both Muslim and Christian. That if they don't give you a Christian, you end to now say, excuse me, where is my own salah? If the, Christ, if the Muslims didn't give you, a Christian is supposed to go and knock the house and say, well, and he explained. He said the story of Isaac and Ismail on their own father, Abraham, is what led to this salah. So even Christian now said, you see salah meat as devilish meat, it means you don't know anything about God. You don't know anything about your religion. So that is why we say, if you want to dialogue, dialogue must be first based on right education, right information. So when we have all this, whatever I am saying, you will actually know that. For example, there was a situation where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, some Christian came to him in the mosque. They said they had, they want to have a dialogue with him. They started talking and they said they want to do their service. I think they are Catholic. Around 12, they want to do something like Angelus. When the Prophet asked them, asked them, say, you want to do, they said they want to go and do their service. The Prophet asked them, can this place convenient for you? That place was inside the mosque. They said, yes, this place is convenient for us. And I asked all the Muslims to go out. He said, when you finish, come and call us. He sent all the Muslims out of the mosque and, and allowed allow the, the Christian to, pray to the do their something. If most Christian knows that and any most any Muslim is insulting him that is going to church, you say, Come, do you believe in your Muhammad? He's the one who will even guide him. So at the end of the day, we will know what we are dialoguing upon. We will know why we are dialoguing. So how come how can we separate religion from, from politics? It's not possible. Let us be sincere with ourselves. <laughs> yes. It's either you don't, when you say you want to separate religion, politics, you don't understand the meaning of religion, or you are confused with the concept of politics. The two should complement each other. Mm. For example, uh, uh, Samuel Alonk of Plateau State said he introduced uh, 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 Forgiveness Day because of the instruction he got from his pastor, uh, uh, Bishop Kaigama. He said, was well, who told him to do this? And he agreed and he did it. If you now say we separate religion from politics, then we don't know what we are doing. We just mean, it means that we have to do religion, we have to practice religion in its practice in this best way, and politics in the best way. It is when religion becomes positive, uh, politics become negative thing that we begin to talk. You separate religion from politics. I'm oh, sorry, Pastor Frank, separating religion from politics. No, no, no. Like the Imam has said, it. you can, like he said, uh, it's to is to see how to manage it, mm. uh -huh, because. It's only because one thing you must understand is that Nigeria is, though we say it's a secular nation, but we are more religious than every other nation in the world. So you, can, you can't actually separate it, but it is, it is left for us to manage it. Uh -huh. Manage it. And again, like I have said, the dialogue must be of good intention. And that is why um, John Maxwell said, 
everything rises and falls on leadership. The leaders, both from maybe Christian, Muslim, or any other religion, must be sincere about, like we have said now, in the Holy Bible, Hosea 4, 6, it says, God says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And Jesus also says something in the book of uh, 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 Mark. He says, take heed what you hear. He also went for that. He said, take heed how you hear. Because it, like we are when we started, we had said that some people hear things and they misinterpret it. Someone may have said something. Some, somebody else may stretch it further. May have stretched it further. And you discover that at the end of the day, we, are, we find ourselves doing the wrong thing. So religion and politics are there. Let me say this. Even in, in churches, uh, let me, that is, that's, that's my constituency, there are politics, yeah. and you don't, you don't deny it. You can't deny that. So you, it's, it's the ability to manage it, and it depends on the leadership. Because if you see a trailer now, wherever the head goes, that is where the body will go. So as a religious man, whatever you, where, 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 where Whatever route you, you told, that is where your, your people will go with you. And again, you know, there is, there is, there is, I, I love this, um, uh, there's this scripture I always love uh, in, in Second Samuel, talking about David. You know, he said, he, he told his, uh, he just said it in the midst of his, his men. He said, oh, that I wish I can drink of the well that is in Jerusalem. And he said so many things. And he just wished it and he said it out. Three of his men stood up. They heard it. Three of his men, they said, yes, we must satisfy our God. They went on. And in those, in, for you to assess that well in Jerusalem, you must have to go through an enemy camp, the Philistines. They broke through. Imagine the killings that took place. And they went, they fetched the water and brought it back to David. So they brought it and said, David, here is the, what you requested for. He said, what? I only wished for it. I didn't request for it. He said, he said, imagine the people you have killed. He said, no, I cannot drink this water. He said, I would rather offer this water to God. And he, that is what, that's exactly what he did. Now, what am I saying? There are some things we wish as religious leader. You are in that position. I mean, your congregation, we talk about 500, we talk about 1,000, we talk about 10,000. There are some religion, religious leaders that controls over 100,000, up to a million in this nation. So there are some things you wish your people just may... Yes, and you just they wish it and they go out of their way <clears throat> and they misinterpret it and they will implement it on your behalf. Just like some things, even in the presidency, there are some things that the president will wish. Oh, I wish this, this thing will be done. This thing will be implemented. So the person that may have heard it will implement it wrongly, but he has heard that, oh, uh, the president may have said, I wish this thing to have been done. So however it was done, let it be done. And that is, the, that, is what, that is when we talk about process. Now we are talking about process. The process is as important as what we want to do. Because in the process of implementing the dialogue, you may now hurt somebody else. That is why I said the goal, what we want to achieve, is very important. And it must not be selfish. It must not be negative. It must not be uh, destructive. In the process of implementing it, you don't, you don't, you don't destroy others for you to rise. It does not work that way. Okay, now let's come to um, uh, Imam Fuad. Our time is flying so fast. Uh, let's get a concluding remark from you, if it's possible, yes. with a Quranic recitation, and you advise Christian and Muslims. No, no, it's just one word. <laughs> if you love God, love what you created. That's it. As it, I mean, it boils down to what I said initially. <laughs> you, you don't fight for God, you know. I also joined um, 
uh, Imam here. If you love God, you will not be destructive. Thank you so much, uh, Imam for what day. Live in peace. Uh, yeah. If you love God, don't destroy what He created. Thank you so much, Pastor Frank, uh, for your time with us on, on the program. This is really suiting, and if we all work with, uh, you know, uh, what Pastor Frank and Imam Fuad have said in one accord. If you love God, do not destroy what He has created. Thank you so much for your time with us. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. So we'll take a quick break and we'll come back. The program continues.